excuse me, the vlog. Hi guys. I don't know if you can even see my head in this or not. Anyway, it has been a while since we have gotten together here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Where it is? We are in the back in the great state of Texas where it was 82 degrees a couple of days ago, but now it is 54 degrees here on, uh, what is it, Friday, January 20th, 2023, and we are back in Texas on our way to the Yucatan Peninsula and on to Belize in a week from today. So uh, as long as I'm sitting here in the great state of Texas, and it is a Friday, we're just going to do what we do every Friday anyway, no matter where we are on the planet, and that is our ecological meltdown roundup rant where I check in with a Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com. Let's see what I, oops, there goes my water. Let's see what has been going on on the planet while I have been, uh, getting out of the snowbound New York, baby. All right, we'll start over there. Let's start in uh, sub-Saharan Africa here today in the lovely country of Malawi where we have an Australian niobium mine which is so far has been instilling anxiety for 16 years, instilling anxiety. There you go. <laughs> in 2000, <coughs> in 2006, Australian mining firm Globe Metals and Mining. There you go. Globe Metals and Mining began exploring for rare earth metals. Its intention to begin commercial mining. Yes, the metals will be used in the manufacture of equipment like electric vehicle batteries and wind turbines. Yes, for villagers being relocated for the mine, you know, for these save the planet technologies, these high tech goods hold little appeal when compared with the loss of their land, not to mention the 16 years they have been living in limbo. Okay, from uh, as long as we're in, as long as we are in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, I think this is part, this is also their weekly uh, YouTube video, looking at a rubber plantation in Liberia. Good Lord. Uh, this is the Salala Rubber Corporation in Liberia, which has been accused of sexually abusing women working on its plantation and grabbing community land. I guess they're grabbing all sorts of things. And so who is Salala? They are owned by this French-Belgian agribusiness giant that operates rubber and palm oil plantations across West and Central Africa. Yep, yep, yep. They're being financed by the International Finance Corporation. In 2019, 22 communities in and around the plantation filed a formal complaint with the IFC. We have a deer checking out. This deer is listening to the collapse of Liberian rubber plantations. So I guess they have Axis deer. I have no idea where these Axis deer came from in the middle of Texas. All right, let's just go back down to Brazil. Hmm. Poisoned by pesticides. I think that's the point of pesticides is to poison 
health crisis deepens in Brazil's indigenous communities. A recent report reveals communities in Brazil's Mato Grosso region are contaminated by the agriculture industry's increasing use of pesticides. About 88% of the plants collected for the study, including medicinal herbs and fruits on indigenous lands, now contain pesticide residue. Samples discovered high levels of pesticides in ecosystems and waters far from crop fields, including carbofuron, a highly toxic substance which is banned in Brazil, hmm. Europe and the U.S. There you go. Experts blame the lack of control by government officials for widespread environmental damage and escalating health crisis among indigenous populations. Uh, good Lord. Uh, a spokesperson for the biggest agrochemical companies operating in Brazil dispute the findings of the report. Mm, yep, yep, yep. And here's their story on that uh, predictable uh, kind of repeat of January 6th down there in Brazil after all of those sore losers. Anyway, we don't need to go into that. Uh, let's see. Here's an article on reptile intelligence. <laughs> reptile intelligence has long been considered inferior to that of birds and mammals, but recent studies in reptile cognition show reptiles have a profound understanding of their environment. I guess, uh, I guess even reptiles now understand, sorry, the reptiles, you know, I guess compared to, well, I guess reptiles are as doomed as every other one, even, a, even the reptilian brain understands. Okay, from reptiles to seabirds, for threatened seabirds on the northeast Atlantic coast, climate change piles on the pressure. A new report shows that puffins and other seabird species in the Northeast Atlantic are at risk from climate change. Imagine that. The report warns that most seabird species would lose a substantial amount of their current breeding sites and available prey due to climate change. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think we've heard enough about that biodiversity conference to last me at least another year. All right. Okay, what is going on with humanities, I guess? What is going on with humanity? This way, humanitarian experts report cascading crises as climate and health emergencies soar. Globally, humanitarian aid workers are facing complex climate and health crises that require urgent adaptations within a shrinking humanitarian space. I'm not sure the shrinking humanitarian space. This is from The Lancet. About 274 million people worldwide are now in need of humanitarian humanitarian assistance up from 235 million in 2021 as climate emergencies intensify. 
Yep, yep, yep. Okay, the Kogi worldview aims to change the face of conservation. That is good to know. Uh, okay, the Kogi tribe in Colombia is going to teach the honkies uh, how to save the planet. All right. Uh, good for the Kogis. Okay, we have an interview with a pangolin expert. I think we all know where the pangolins are headed. From pangolins, let's go to look at sharks and rays. Check in. More than half of reef sharks and rays are now threatened with extinction. More than half of the known species of coral reef sharks and rays are already threatened with extinction, mostly because of overfishing at this point. Um, new research reported that population trends are declining for 94 coral reef shark and ray species. Rays are even more threatened than sharks. Reef sharks and rays are typically called for human consumption. Do you think so? All right, we have a corruption scandal going full force in the Parks Agency of Thailand. Yep, yep, yep. The head of Thailand's park departments, parks department, was arrested after anti-corruption authorities found envelopes and gift boxes in his desk containing the equivalent of one hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash. Do you think so? Conservationists say corruption in the department, as well as budget cuts, has had severe implications for the country's protected areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have seaweed-based alternatives to plastic food wrappers to save the planet. Okay, we're just going to wrap up all of that stuff in seaweed and we will save the planet. I love when they uh, ask a question, how much of Bangladesh's protected forest are really protected? There you go. Uh, I think we all know the answer. Uh, to that question, it's the same answer as the question to any other country. The country has fifty-one officially protected areas. Com that hold a combined two million acres of forest, you know, ostensibly meant to preserve biodiversity and wildlife. However, state-sponsored development projects have emerged as one of the key threats in these conservation initiatives. How about a new soccer training facility? They're mowing down one of their protected forests to build a new soccer training facility. And of course, firewood collection is driving much of the deforestation. Uh, <laughs> protected areas. Could we please, anybody still, uh, 
being uh, uh, diluted by the thought that there's such a thing as protected areas. I've been reading my book that I wrote in 2009 uh, where I was talking about the absolute joke of protected areas. It means absolutely nothing. It probably means less in the year 2023 than it did in 2009, is my guess, is that since I wrote that book, that the very notion of the term protected areas has just become a, a darkly ironic, uh, just, a, just a, an a, a absurd notion. Okay. Anyway, speaking of protected areas, we have more marine protected areas planned for Indonesia. All right. I'll have to get it now. I don't know, are the, are the marine protected areas as big a joke as the terrestrial protected areas or not? Okay, speaking, well, I guess we can look at the borderline and look at mangroves, which are uh, unprotected from wind and land. Fishermen on Indonesia's Batam Island suffer as mangroves decline. Fishing is becoming a meager profession in Indonesia's industrial and resort hub, I bet. Satellite imagery shows that only one and a half percent of the island's landmass still retains mangrove habitat. Construction of dams, industrial estates, and reservoirs are the primary cause of mangrove destruction. And then, of course, you know, mangroves are one of these prime examples. Mangroves and sea turtles, I put as when I'm talking about that climate change right now is not the biggest threat. But over the next few decades, climate change is going to be the number one threat to mangroves and sea turtles looking for places to have nests as sea level rise and salt water intrusion and all of that. Uh, anyway, here is more articles about Bangladesh protected areas. Yep, 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 yep. Native bird populations have declined significantly in the past 30 years. From an estimated 800,000 birds in 1994 to 233,000 in the same area, in 2017 and 163,000 one year later in 2018, which I guess is the latest uh, estimate from five years ago. So 800,000 native birds in 1994 down to 163,000. By 20, my guess is now it's, good lord, I guess it's well under 100,000. When is that less than one-eighth of the number of birds? I actually have Brother Cardinal singing behind here. All right, what's going on with extreme heat? Extreme heat takes a toll on tropical countries' economies. Extreme heat now costs tropical countries more than 5% of their annual per capita GDP. 
new research shows uh, poorer tropical countries suffer the worst effects of heat waves despite being the least culpable and least economically capable of adapting. Do you think so? But uh, let's just wind up. Uh, we're going to wind up in Costa Rica, always being held up as the poster child of... Uh, here, I guess this is on the Osa Peninsula of Costa Rica, where I have had one of the greatest weeks of my life on the Osa Peninsula. So what is going on on the Osa Peninsula in Costa Rica today? Deliberate dumping of plastic trash in the Pacific. In late August of 2022, the sea turtle conservation team of Osa Conservation in Costa Rica noticed a significant increase in plastic debris, mostly drink bottles arriving on the beaches they patrol. An analysis revealed the region of their manufacture to mostly be East Asia, and the manner of their arrival suggested that this was deliberate dumping of the plastic waste near uh, Costa Rica, not from somewhere across the Pacific. This kind of illegal dumping activity has been documented elsewhere. Do you think so? Anyway, guys, from Malawi to Costa Rica, and it is a just another January day in Texas. Brother Cardinal out singing, the deer walking around grazing. And, uh, I have to take my gas sucking truck to find me a mechanic to work on my truck while I'm down in Belize, where I will be heading in one week. The little dog is not going to Belize. The little dog is going to be staying here. All right, little dog, don't go harass those deer, please. All right. Get out there and enjoy your uh, your bird song in the background while you still can. Bye, guys.